So what about what about gaming? What about gaming's impact today? Oh, well, I mean, definitely compared to when I was a young lad, it's definitely a lot more popular and far-reaching than it ever has been. Oh yeah, you know, back definitely. back back in the <laughs> shut up with the definitely's back back in the <laughs> day when I when I was a kid, the only time you would see gaming in media was when something was bad. Like you would see it on the news, yeah. and they'd be like. Oh my God! There's a side boob, and there's a blue side boob on Mass Effect, the game that is exposing our children to sexuality. <laughs> there's the hot coffee mod in GTA San Andreas where you can see the character have sex. Oh God! GTA just being its own game was on the news. <laughs> oh, that was on the GTA news is constantly. <laughs> is violence in video games affecting our children to do violent things in real life? It's like, dude, come on now. If anything, the video game gets that shit out. Like it, mm. it, if I'm angry and you play a freaking video game, it's like bam, it's 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 over. You get that rage out in the game. You get all your aggression out in the game, and then afterwards you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, and oh, then afterwards the you're in your rage. Village. What? Yeah. Well, I said unless the game makes you rage, then yeah. If you like said, so oh, I'm pissed off, I'm gonna go play some, let's say for Apex Legends, and then you just get fucking dogged on the whole entire night, and they just gonna go to bed pissed off. <laughs> oh, dude, oh, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> that fucking happens so like, good god, <laughs> that's me every night. I mean, it's not every night because like there's some some <laughs> matches we're doing like fucking fantastic, but some nights I don't know what it is. Some nights you're just getting shit on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and you're you can't even freaking win a match you can't even get a freaking kill and you're just so pissed you can't walk around longer than a minute or two minutes because as soon as you land you get dropped I, 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 speaking of apex legends i fucking hate that map that uh what the hell is it that that like bluish map oh fuck that map dude that map sucks <laughs> it's horrible oh, lame piss lame piss yeah it's a terrible map no, I think I think gaming's impact today has has really changed, and it it basically changed the world of entertainment. You know, like I said on the news, gaming used to be bad. You know, violent video games used to be bad. Sex and video games used to be bad. They only paid attention to those aspects and and not the storytelling that was in the game, or you know how creative it is and and everything. Well, not that GTA was that, that much of storytelling, but <laughs> but I mean it it's came so far. And I remember a long time ago, you know, people's parents would sit there and say, you know, you'll never make it anywhere in life playing games. Well, look at fucking people now. If we would have just stuck to playing fucking games, then we may be like them. <laughs> Some people are freaking millionaires because of it. <laughs> what would yeah. you say would be like the first game that came out that really kind of brought in the audience for gaming in general? Halo, dude. Yeah. Halo fucking Halo. Man. Yeah, Halo yeah, really yeah. revolutionized games. Easily. Yeah. Or how about the first ones that have party chat? Yeah, Halo revolutionized gaming like no other. They re they revolutionized first person shooters. Mm hmm. And then when Halo Two came out, oh my god, like <laughs> the, like the world got set on fire, and you know it it, it had freaking multiplayer, which was something that nobody really experienced on consoles, you know. Hmm. It was everything. It was your life. It was, it your was life. everything. <laughs> you say it like that. It was everything. It literally was everything. And nobody, nobody actually really saw gaming as like a, a skill. You know what I mean? Because like to take to be good at a game, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of dedication to it. But everybody, mm -hmm. if you were to tell somebody that you were a gamer, or you're like, "Hey, I'm going to a Halo tournament again," just like the anime thing, they would look at you, they'd bully you. Uh, you know, and, and they would just treat you like, like shit. Mm. They'd be like, oh, you're a failure in life. I think some other, I think two other ones that also kind of revolutionize, revolutionize and probably broaden would be Minecraft. And then as much as it's fun to hate because of how popular it is now and it'll probably Call be of Call Duty. of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> Call of Duty right. when it that hit came Modern Warfare. Right Modern yeah. Warfare, yeah. The original ones not didn't gain as much traction, but once Modern Warfare came out, who was on the news blew with the whole up like, war, in terms of popularity. Yeah. <laughs> it was on the news with that no Russian uh mission mm -hmm. where they're yeah. like yeah. they go into here and they just slaughter a bunch of innocent people. I'm like, bro, I've been playing video games for a long time. This this is literally nothing. <laughs> like <laughs> those aren't real people. Yeah, first off, there's there should be no connection between your emotions for reality 
and the emotions for the game. Like it, mm-hmm. th- there should be that connect there. We're not just gonna go into the next right. airport and start blasting people. It will people. always be there. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna go start into the airport and start blasting people. And I don't think people understood that, especially adults as we were growing up. They were like, oh, if they see it in the video game and they do it in the video game, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna go do it in real life. It's like, dude, there's freaking rape in anime and manga. You don't see people just raping people in the streets of Japan. Like, <laughs> those things get out of you while you're playing these stories. And and another thing, story is one thing. There, there was almost nobody knew that video games were just an interactive way, uh, an interactive storytelling process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, games back in our day, they, they weren't as... There wasn't a whole lot that had these just groundbreaking fucking stories like today. But I mean, you know, you play something like Final Fantasy X on the PS2 or whatnot, it, it tells a great story. The cutscenes were just flawless. You you felt, uh, you know, you felt emotion for the characters and there was some, a little bit of attachments there. But it didn't mean that you started, you know, it didn't mean that you would stop playing the game and then, you know, go make out with somebody underwater or kick balls underwater. <laughs> it's like, that's not, you know. I mean, I did try to kick a ball underwater. You're an idiot. <laughs> 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 you tried to play think, Blitzball in real life. Yeah. I think I mean, Final Fantasy was your first love. <laughs> it was my everything. So, well, actually, that's that's a funny question. We'll go down the line here. Blizz, speaking clearly into your microphone, please. What was your first video game? Sega Channel. No, no, no. Your first, <laughs> <laughs> your first video game. The what game you that? played. What was your first favorite video game? That's what I should say. Sonic. Really? Which which one? Sonic 2 and I think 3. Was it on the Dreamcast? Was that on the Dreamcast? It was probably on his fucking Sega on channel. Sega. <laughs> 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 the The ghetto version of the Genesis. <laughs> You had a Dreamcast, right? No, no, it just says Sega Channel. Well, he, no, he he had the Dream Channel. That was the next evolution of it. <laughs> Dream Channel. <laughs> All right, Pabs, what was your your first favorite video game? Uh, my first favorite. Ooh, that's a rough one. Um, my first favorite one would be Final Fantasy IX. That's like so later on in life. I was expecting maybe like Yoshi's Frickin' Island or something on the Genesis. Yeah, once you Did, play well, I played the Super six. Nintendo ones, but none of them were like. I mean, if you want to, let's, let's say, fine, I'll go older and do a Super Nintendo. I'll probably say oh. Super Mario RPG. I never played that. So, yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. I've never played that. What about you, Subi? Talking about it's a good one. It's easily Halo 1. On Holy PC. fuck, that's so. <laughs> we're talking Halo about one pc on my old computer it's oh, a lot that. so wait when did you start even <laughs> playing video games then did you not start like when you were a little kid like us well i guess the, really the only game older than that that i actually played a lot was hot wheels turbo racing holy shit you had a fucking tragic childhood i'm sorry oh, yeah. <laughs> I never owned a console you want some ma energy to like time. use your pain <laughs> <laughs> I had a PSP for like two years. I didn't even have a console. One God, moment. that's so sad. I think I had a PSP. So called Navy wow. Seals was my game and PSP. Wow, <laughs> PSP was your first console. That's not even really a console, right? Well, they had that Nintendo uh, channel, that tennis thing. That you look into. <laughs> What's that called? Channel. You look into the goggles. Oh, there is a Nintendo thing. You look into a goggles. Yeah, that's isn't that from like Boy. the seventies? It's like this Nintendo goggle thing you look into and yeah. you can play like Mario Tennis and stuff. Yeah, it was like 3D and that was from like ages like ago. From like Tiger Electronics? No, dude. N- shut up. It's a real thing. I-, I know what he's talking about, but like it, it failed. Was pretty cool. It failed so hard because people would like get sick off of it. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Amateurs. No, wait. You had one of those, but you didn't have like a fucking Genesis? That was... How did we you get one? Well, how did you get your hands on something rare versus a Genesis that you could find, <laughs> <laughs> that you could find at a fucking well, a garage get to sale? Choose what appeared in my hands back then. <laughs> Good God! My about? first real console was a PS3. 
Wow, dude, wow. you have not been gaming. Wow. Um, oh, yeah, the e-machine's a computer. I'm sorry. Remember you guys were talking about judging people? You're doing that now. <laughs> I, I you, all. you know what? Like, it's it's just relevant. Like, I love all gamers, and wherever they started, that's great, but the I fuck, do. bro? <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, the game, if you're saying which one we played the most as our first game, that was Halo PC. Mm. Halo Custom Edition. Well, that okay. was my life. Okay, so what about you, Tiki? I'm I'm talking little kid, since you didn't have a cursed childhood like like CB. Well, maybe because <laughs> you didn't have a dad, but still, let let's go into your first oh, favorite wow. video game. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, I played a lot of Goldeneye 007. Okay. I just I played a lot of Nintendo 64. Okay. That was uh played a lot of that Turok. Oh, dude, Turok. I had uh, <laughs> on the N64. Even though I hated wrestling, or I mean, I don't, I don't really like wrestling. I'm not a big fan, but the WWF No Mercy, it's pretty fun. Just making <laughs> wacky characters and then Dang, me and I'll doing fun and, things. Uh, Sway did play that a lot. What What was that for? Yeah, that was a fun game. Yeah. What console was that on? Uh, Nintendo 64. Hmm. I think on my N64, I really only played like GoldenEye and uh, Mario 64 and then some Yoshi game. Maybe it was like Yoshi's Island, but I don't, I don't really uh, know. I just know there was multiple Zelda colored long. Yoshis. And Zelda as well was on there. Zelda. I never got into time, Zelda. Majora's Mask, Donkey Kong 64, Super Smash Brothers. Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon Snap. Yeah, but I'm, I'm All just about saying. the Lion King. Get the fuck out of here. It's like Lion King all those. A G. No, the, but. You played the Lion King video game? I think that was on Super Nintendo. I was on Is Super that Nintendo? Nintendo. That's on regular Nintendo, isn't it? Oh, yeah, on was the it, Sega was it on your Sega channel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. You per you sure you weren't playing Lion Channel? <laughs> the Tiger <Lion> King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I think my like first uh, like favorite video game that I played like a lot, a lot was probably Altered Beast. I played that a lot on the Sega Genesis. I think maybe the Genesis was like my first console. I know, I know it was my, I think it was my dad's, but then, uh, you know, transitioning over to like PlayStation and stuff, I, I had went through the generations as console. I only recently just got into PC gaming, so. Mm -hmm. I think I remember playing like Aladdin on the Genesis. Where the fuck are you guys playing these Disney games at? I never <laughs> played a Disney movie game. <laughs> just because you didn't have the sega channel no i had a, i had the actual console i didn't have like yeah. the fucking dollar i trade had a console brand. i had the sega genesis and it also had a little thing that went in the top and it uh you could like how do i put this blow on it had modded games where you could have like sonic 2 and put sonic 1 in the top of it and allow you to get like knuckles and play sonic 1 that just sounds fake no that's actually legit i remember actually I know, saying something legit. about that where you can make towers of like cartridges <laughs> it's freaking stupid. <laughs> Actually, speaking of cartridges, could anybody ever see, or did anybody ever foresee that cartridges were just like gonna go away and eventually, even, you know, be at the platform we're at right now, where everything's just installed? Well, it's kind of weird because cartridges went away, disappeared for a while, and then the switch kind of brought them back. Yeah, yeah. And then everything moved to CDs. <laughs> I went to CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays. What's yeah. raised? And then now everything's just completely like just install online. It. Yeah, just mm. it, it install it from the damn online store. RIP GameStop. And I kind of like it just for the fact that you don't need to be online to play things, but at the same time, I mean, like everyone has internet. Yeah. That was a big uproar when the Xbox One was announced. They're like, hey, you need to have internet to play this and people were like what the fuck bro like i remember that oh I, I can't play it if i don't have internet it's like first off how are you watching this stream right now why are you complaining about your you have internet it's watching it through carrier pigeon <laughs> yeah like how the fuck <laughs> and if, if you don't have internet yeah, if you don't have internet then i'm sorry but you're probably not playing <laughs> consoles <laughs> you're probably not even playing video games but i mean we can all agree that the was it Don Matrick at the time? He could have definitely went about that a whole lot better than he did. Oh, dude, the the whole presentation <laughs> and explanation of that that entire uh, you know gimmick to the console 
could have been way better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> way, just like <laughs> just like Sega Dreamcast could have been freaking advertised better. That that That's console like literally more. failed off of advertising. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never would have guessed that like gaming would have been as big as it was today. You know, multiple people would tell you growing up, you're not going to get anywhere in your life playing games, et cetera, et cetera. And now it is such a big thing that people are becoming celebrities off of mm-hmm. playing games. You know, they're making millions of dollars. They're mm-hmm. going on freaking talk shows and everything like that. They're appearing in music videos. It's like superstar status now. Yeah, all from being a gamer. And just, like, imagine people our age that how they feel when they see that, that have been gaming for years. They're like, what the fuck, man? I was told to get a normal freaking job. I was told to, like, go to school, join the military, all that kind of shit, when I could have just been doing what I loved to do. (laughs) If I just stayed at it, I could be a Twitch streamer, be big as Ninja. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And, and, And in all honesty, I don't think a lot of these popular Twitch streamers I feel like they got into games because it was becoming popular on Twitch and people were seeing, oh shit, this makes money and stuff. But there's very yep. few of them that are actual gamers. Like, I've been playing this mm. game, I've been playing games since I was a little kid. There's some of them out there and I totally respect them for that. But the ones that just kind of jump into the crowd and like, oh yeah, I'm playing this game and that game, but they're not like really gamers. It's like, dude, what the fuck? It's a lot of those. And what was kind of fascinating to me today, remember how most time in the past, when you see gaming, it was kind of considered like a male-centric hobby. Oh, but yeah. But I saw like a little fact from PlayStation, I guess, saying that 41% of PlayStation owners are female. Yeah. So you almost got half of PlayStation owners. And I mean, regardless of what they play, they still own a gaming console. Compared yeah. back in the day where it's like, oh, I play games. It was like, oh, I don't play. I'm a... I'm a girl. I don't do all know. that. Yeah. I'm a girl. I don't play video games. Video games are for dudes, and you yeah, know, they're for nerds and everything. And uh, again, yeah. the, being a gamer also got you kind of bullied or picked on in school just because you enjoyed playing video games. And I, and I think mm-hmm. I appreciate that games are in such a, a place right now where people can show more appreciation towards what gaming is about. You know, it's not mm-hmm. about just going into an airport and slaughtering people. It's not about uh, you know, getting a hooker in GTA and then killing her to get your money back. That, that's not what it's about. <laughs> you know, those those are fun, just pastime things, right, that happen in games. But games is really about an escape. And that, that's mm-hmm. what it really almost, what it's always been for me is the fact that I can come home from whatever I'm doing and then I can just delve into this world just like somebody would read a book or watch a movie. It's the same kind of imagination connect right there. You escape into this world that uh, tells you a story and you become part of it. You become the hero of that world. Mm-hmm. That That's and where games. gaming really got me. And it teaches good lessons like the game we just started that we'll be uploading on our channel here on Tuesday. It takes two. It's about a child and her parents going through a divorce and you're playing as a parent as they got turned into dolls. Go on this adventure to try to Fall back help fix love. the <clears throat> marriage. So, yeah, not all video games are violent death and destruction. Wait, Peps, yeah. move, move away from your mic a little bit. All right. Yeah, you, you got to find that uh, book of love. Yeah. <laughs> but my my opinions on that is totally different. Look, if something's broken and you two aren't in love, you guys shouldn't just continuously try to change each other. You should just be in love with who you are and who they are. So, fuck that little I mean, girl. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. She's, She's trying, trying to... Acorn dolls. I mean, to fix broken glass with duct tape. Yeah, there you go. Work. Fucking, I've used this expression so many times. It's like dropping a fucking glass and picking it back up and gluing it together. You, you put some water in it, it's just going to seep and break. You yeah, know what I mean? It's not going to hold the milk. Exactly. Or the, or the milk. Either one. Or the mom energy. Or the mom energy. <laughs> my energy. Actually, my energy would bond the cracks. <laughs> it would turn the glass into a chalice. So... <laughs> It'll turn the glass into a pitcher. <laughs> to a big mug. <laughs> so what about um like decision making in game? Like how do you guys feel about that? Like cause that was never really a thing, at least for me, until I played like Kotor. Mass Effect. Yeah. It, yeah. That's the biggest deal one right there. I think it's becoming more relevant in games too for people to like kind of design and make their own story within a certain guideline been great mm-hmm. i i always used to love just like being super evil kill everyone 
and then I'd do another playthrough, and then I'd be good and see like what the outcome would be. Well, thanks for <laughs> shitting on gaming's about story right there. You just went into. I used to just love killing people. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, oh, no. I expected that from Blizz. <laughs> That's kind of the opposite for me. Typically, in all games I play, like Fable, Mass Effect, or whatever ones I can't think about at the time, I'm always the good person. I'm Paragon and Mass Effect all the way. I have a halo above yeah. my head and Fable. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost always do a Paragon playthrough, a good playthrough in, in really anything. I try to incorporate stuff like that I would do in real life. So there's a couple of times where I just straight shot somebody. But that was yeah. because they did something just extremely fucking heinous. You know, it's like you did something mm -hmm. fucked up, bro. Like, I don't think you should get away with this. And I'm in a position to stop you. So mm -hmm. that that's those are the kinds of things I would do in real life. So I, I, I like the whole that gaming has become more profound and stories become more profound. And they're letting you to kind of take control of things. Like, mm -hmm. I like the idea of like, you can't kill someone over stealing a candy bar but in a game if they do something really small and you're trying to go for that uh renegade story storyline you can kill them for stealing ahead. a candy bar yeah <laughs> so <laughs> what game i think it was fallout I'd, I'd kill a lot of people in fallout so you just like killing people yeah Not, i mean i killing people <laughs> <laughs> you like killing people in a story driven way exactly <laughs> so tiki like uh, you know I, I studied a little bit of psychology here if you need to talk to somebody <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just talked uh, about just, this. Have uh, all, just, all of our listeners know that tiki in fact does not do anything bad in real life so that kind of shows that just because he's a raging asshole in video games doesn't mean he's a raging asshole in real life he doesn't have the urge to go shoot people out no, in real it's life just, it's so just he just gets escape. it out in the game yeah it's my escape from reality just be an asshole in game. Yeah, actually, Tiki's a very uh, emotional, sensitive, you know, cinnamon roll. So that's that's basically what Tiki is. He's definitely not a murderer, <laughs> unless he's modern. Goody cinnamon roll. I'm just yeah. <laughs> but what what do you uh, like? What do you actually think about? Like, do you think these gamers and uh, you know these popular gamers and these pro gamers should really be making the money that they do make? I don't think um, so. I don't think so. But then again, I'm in the same vein as actors and sports stars <laughs> and everything like that. That's a lot of money for one person to be making just to play a sport, act in a movie, or play a game. So, well, so for like, so for the playing the sport, I, we're only seeing the game of it, right? You know, we're only seeing them playing the sport, and we're not seeing them train. Yeah, so you don't the, see all the behind the scenes stuff that yeah. they go through. However, <laughs> however, I still don't think they should be multi-millionaires you know what i mean <laughs> and i still don't think that that should be the case they do train very hard they're, they're very mm -hmm. you know they go through a lot to be in that profession and to be a professional but i don't know if it, it to me yeah. i don't think it should be millions and and as far as like gamers and streamers and everything it's like i'm glad it's popular and i'm glad it's a, it's a normal thing now because you don't have to feel different or left out um but holy shit, dude, some of these people are earning millions a month, <laughs> a, a freaking month. <laughs> and I'd probably bite my tongue if we were earning millions a month off of our shit. But <laughs> I was going to say, be like, a different page. Like, I think gamers right. should be earning that money. Yeah, game, game, <laughs> gamers definitely are. <laughs> Check your bank account and see your six figures. Like, yeah, this is this is perfect. Gamers should be making this kind of money. Gamers should <laughs> obviously <laughs> be making this money. <laughs> Tell me what you want me to say. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's a skill, and entertaining people is also a fucking skill. So, I, I, and and really, the the money that they earn is really based on people watching and people paying, because mm -hmm. it's not they're not like being really paid by a company; they're being paid by people. So, I guess if mm -hmm. if people watch it and people enjoy it, then you know, by all means, <clears throat> freaking Falk Ray and Amaranth and everybody else that's big out there, enjoy it. I actually like watching you guys. So. And Neebs Gaming, mm -hmm. I love you. Notice us. I like watch, <laughs> watching uh, casual gamers. Yeah. Notice us, Senpai. Notice us, Senpai, please, uh, <laughs> Neebs Gaming. I like watching casual gamers as well. Uh, I like watching or listening to like a lot of their reviews and everything. Because that seems casual to be where Casual gamers? They're... Who's that? 
Oh, well, let me tell you. Sponsored by my energy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it. <laughs> So you guys have any, like, real thoughts on, on like, the gaming industry today? Uh, m m one of my last, like, kind of thoughts is I don't think that developers nowadays are really held accountable for anything they do. Oh, hell no. No, yeah. they're not. I don't, I don't think they are anymore, dude. Like, I think we've lost the developers used to care about getting out a finished quality game on time, <clears throat> and it would be the whole friggin' game. Nowadays, they release a game, they're like, it's gonna be so amazing, you guys are gonna love this, and then it's like 20% of the game, or it just straight sucks. Or people get fucking hacked. Like, it <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, they just don't care nowadays. Definitely depends on the producer. Yeah, it, it yeah. depends on that. And it's wild to me. I think we talked about it in a little bit last episode. Is it's wild to me how these, uh, these companies and these developers that you sit develop just, like, what the fuck games have taken over the actual good game category. <laughs> <clears throat> Like, you mean like what the fuck games like that whole goose game no like what the fuck games like crash bandicoot going to freaking oh. last of us <laughs> you know <laughs> it, it makes you would never ever have guessed that crash bandicoot and jack and daxter would suddenly turn into fucking the last of us <laughs> i know they go from jack and daxter and then they go to uncharted and then it's all like and last of us and now they're making a damn show out of it it's like holy shit this is, <sighs> yeah the freaking last of us crap <laughs> yeah it, it's it's so crazy and you don't even see gaming in media anymore like you watch the news and if you see anything in gaming it's like the last of us won six six hundred thousand awards at the blah 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 mm. it's like that it's only good things now <laughs> yeah god of war was like that too there's even a lot of parents that are like oh shit my kid is good at fucking fortnite i should just get his ass into fortnite and make millions off of him <laughs> <laughs> Buy them all yeah. the streaming stuff. I think I, what we're I, seeing a lot of that though is from the people who grew up playing games and then aren't as against it as our parents probably were because they didn't have as much of a strong gaming front as they as we did growing up. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's <laughs> and there's probably those parents out there that are just like, Oh, I'm just gonna make a YouTube channel about my kid unboxing toys and just, you know, use them, make some money. And it works too. Oh, fuck Not yeah, a bad works. idea. You've seen have myself a kid. <laughs> See, my energy made me want to have a kid. <laughs> I think it's a place you can rent kids. <laughs> <laughs> Back to video games and closing thoughts. Who? Anyways, guys, what are your closing thoughts and and impact of gaming? And where do you want to see gaming in the future? Do you want to do? You, or actually, where do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's still going to be relevant 10 years from now? Do you think content creation and gaming 10, 20 years from now is still going to be the way, form of entertainment, you know, streaming and everything? Yes. I think, like, VR gaming is going to take off pretty soon. I think augmented reality gaming is going to be taking off alongside that. Yeah, that's pretty much where I see gaming going is that VR augmented reality type of thing where you're just... Step you're in your hollow movie? deck or some shit. Or, oh, you know, Sword Art Online. Yeah, Sword Art Online's uh, augmented game? AR one. Or Endgame. I can't wait for that Royal Rumble. Well, Endgame <laughs> is a bar, Tiggy. I think you're talking about Ready Player One, but, you know. Oh, yeah. That's, that's... Yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> God, are, you, are you a gamer or what's going on, bro? Are you there right now? It's a gamer bar. <laughs> Sorry, he's recording. Bro. I went there last week. <laughs> Why you streaming? Where the, why'd you even go there last week? Yeah. Just check it out. Sick invite. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the invite, Dick. Oh, okay. I'll invite you next time. Oh yeah, thanks. There's probably not gonna be next time. Hi guys, I'm a I'm the casual gamer. <laughs> <laughs> check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I don't, I don't know, man. Like I I think in ten years from now, I'm not. I really hope to see more augmented reality stuff, and I hope to see more things where we're kind of more interconnected with the game. But I think the whole entertainment of gaming, of uh, you know, live streaming games, of, of making shows like kind of like Neeps Gaming does, I think that's going to be the the source of entertainment for a long time. As long as these developers keep pushing out content that 
people want to play and stories that are so so well written you know somebody's gonna mm. make something on it and content creation is gonna be the new thing i can even see like big television networks being like hey approaching a streamer and say hey just be on you know our network or be on our streaming service or something i see that coming mm -hmm. i can see that yeah, before yeah. disney plus has its own streaming section yeah right oh yeah <laughs> uh, paramount paramount plus yeah is that the new one now hey you know uh speaking of fucking streaming sections you guys do know that that fucking twitch has a hot tub section yeah, you need to make was, a video for it. it yeah, no. added, wasn't it? Yeah, it was ago? newly added like a couple yeah, a couple of days ago. They they have a new oh. hot tub streaming section, which is <laughs> like complete that's uh it's, it's time for us to shine. <laughs> Look, yeah, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Who's getting a hot tub? Uh, <sighs> getting a hot tub. Anyways, yeah, I'm getting people. Those are pretty much our closing thoughts and our thoughts about gaming today. It, it's had a great impact in our life, and we're glad to see that people aren't ridiculed for gaming and anime anymore, and it's not <clears throat> it's not considered a, a socially awkward thing. Uh, we appreciate that nobody's really getting bullied over it anymore, and it's kind of moving into the mainstream media and, and really taking over the world. Um, gaming's been such a big part of our lives. We love it. It's what we do, and it's why we started doing this, because we it's not really even for the money. It's just the fact that we want to spread that peace, love, and gaming. And, uh, you know, our hearts go out to it. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today on Sunday Morning Chat. Drink your ma energy, and we will see you next time. Adios. Hey. See ya.